Right, so today we're going to be looking at the X9 scanner. Take out the X9 scanner, release the clip, put it on top of the tripod, make sure it's secure and then close the clip. Make sure I've got a fully charged battery. Start it up, I'm going to slot in the battery. Close the battery, make sure my legs are nice and solid, turn it round and then turn it on via the on button. Then when it's run through its procedures, it will give me some LED indications on the bottom. Once it's connected to my tablet, these should go green. If the legs were out of level, I would have a different colour on here, indicating that the legs were out of level and I would need to reposition the legs to level. It will self-level to a degree, but if we are at a level, we will see it on the uh, LED lights around the side of it. So you can see them currently flashing. Hopefully now once this connects to my tablet, I should get all green once it turns on. There you go. It's now connected to my T10 tablet. I can see all my lights at the bottom are all green, indicating it's nice and level, ready to scan. And I can see here on my tablet that I've got the Wi-Fi at 88%. It's running 5, five gigahertz, battery 93%. And I've got 9 gigabytes left on the storage on the SD card. And then we can go into the app called Trimble Perspective in our T10 tablet. So I'm going to create a new project in here. I'm going to give the project a name. And I'm just going to call this X9 as we're doing an X9 scan. Obviously, the X9 now comes in two different variants. We've got the X9 Core and the X9 Premium. Okay, so now I'm connected up to my scanner. I can see in here I've got green ticks from a scanner. The Wi-Fi connection between here and there, it, ha it is currently working over a Wi-Fi 5 band to give us uh, the fastest information into the tablet. And I can see I've got a green tick on my battery as well. I can go into my scan preferences and then knock it up to a standard scan. Then I've got the option here for images. I'm going to have the images on. And I do also have the option for HDR images on it as well. For this example, I'm not going to use the HDR images. I'm just going to do some basic scans. So all I need to do now is make sure I've got my parameters set. And the parameters are correct and accurate for what I want, wish to scan. And then I'm simply just going to hit start scan. Standing back away from it, but not too far away from it for where I lose Wi-Fi signal, which is quite important. So one thing to note at the moment with the X9, the beauty of the X9 is they are actually self-leveling and self-calibrating. So when you're doing the scan, it is actually calibrating the machine itself. So with a lot of older terrestrial uh, traditional scanners, you'd have to do a calibration process, which again, time consuming might cost you money sending it away etc so with this now it will do its onboard calibrations all itself as it's doing the scan so the x9 really is a very very simplistic start press go and away you go scanning so at the moment it will be taking pictures running through its self calibration procedure and then it will start to scan as it's scanning, I can see the scan going on screen and then I can see it downloading into my Trimble perspective on my T10 tablet. As it's turning around, it's now capturing these images. I've left the HDR off just for the sakes of this film because it does take a little bit longer on the HDR to capture them in images, but the payoff is you get a much higher resolution image. And there you go. There's a beep just to let us know that the uh, scan is complete. And now it's just currently downloading the images all to the tablet. So everything is going from here into the tablet and I can see it live. One th important thing to note as well while we're on here is these do have the capability to use a red dot and do, what's, uh, and do a resection to help with georeferencing. It's not going to give you the same kind of accuracy as maybe what a traditional total station was in the sense that you are positioning these 
as you can see, I've got retros all over the building from where I train our engineers. So we might, if we wanted to, take a shot to a couple of retros after the georeferencing, when we're taking them two shots, it would then be in the correct coordinate system. Also, we can do a high precision point. So if there was a point in this building where we needed to get a highly accurate precision point in, we have the capabilities of doing that as well. So now I've done my first scan, all I'm going to simply do is move over to my second scan. One thing that's very important to note with these scans is always make sure you have a minimum of 30% overlap. So from wherever station one was, this will be station two, and we need to make sure that if we're doing a cloud to cloud registration, that we have a 30% overlap. So from where I am, can I see 30% of my last scan? Well, yeah, I can, because I have only moved 10 meters. So I can go ahead and just go start scan. And then this will start now as station two. So now it's done the initialization procedures, which will be the self calibration. It is now going through the scan. Scanning speed is obviously going to vary depending on the point density, the parameters which we've set in it. I've set a very coarse parameter in for this demonstration. Scan speed will vary depending on your parameters set within the controller, the T10 tablet. You may wish to have a more coarse scan and faster scans with faster station times, or you may prefer to have longer scans with more fixed point density inside of it. So now that scan's done, it'll be downloading the scan in station two. It will be also registering it to station one with inside the tablet. So it will know using that overlap roughly how to land it on top. So when I'm looking at it on the screen, I can see my differences from station one to station two. And I can see it in colors, which we'll show you in a minute. And also now it will be taking the images and then sending the images to the tablet. Also, one thing to note is when I'm registering it, I've got it registered to last. So what that means is I go one, two, three, four, making sure I've got my 30% overlap on each of my scans. If I wanted to skip a scan or I'd missed out a piece of a scan, I could say do station one, two, three, four, and realize maybe I've left out a bit of detail, do a station five, but then register that station five to maybe station three or within the tablet. So now I've got my images downloaded. I've now got my scan downloaded and I've got my two stations in here in my tablet. So now we've got our two scans that are registered to each other. So I can have a look at here. I can have a look at the register, export, display nearest view, or I can have a look at the view in it. And here's the views in it where I can see I've taken the, where it's taken the panoramic pictures. I can have it in true color, color coded intensity or grayscale. So I'll just leave it in grayscale for this. Then I can go back to my map, have a look in here, and then I can have a look at this in 3D. So this is the beauty of the X9 as opposed to quite a few, the X9 Core and the X9 Premium, as opposed to quite a few of the other scanners where you wouldn't necessarily get this kind of detail and be able to look at the data and make sure that everything's okay. So you can see there how I'm live looking at the links between scan one and scan two. These are represented at the moment by colors on here by station colors but I could put it into scan color or a grayscaled intensity. So as you can see, in my grayscaled intensity, I can have a look in here and then see how everything's looking, or I can put it back into my station color and then make sure where I've got my blue, which will be station two, has got a nice 30% overlap on station one, which it has. And then we can look at this in real time and have a look at the data. It won't exactly be a fair representation of what you're going to see on something like Trimble Realworks, but it will give us a really good indication of how our scans look in, the photos in the scan, how the station views look in, 
how we're looking from station one, making sure we've got all this detail in that we need. We're happy with these scans, everything looks fine. The links between them are all fine. If I did a random scan, let's say over here, for example, it would give me a bad link. So that's where you'd want to avoid it and you'd want to throw in these extra scans. It's very important that we keep this 30% uh, overlap at all times, really. Because if we don't, the cloud to cloud registration will not compute com properly when it's under 30%. Everything looks good. We can come up to here to finalize and export. Now, this is the point now where some clients do like to do, say, an E57, and they actually like to refine the project and maybe colorize the point cloud and even create the high quality pictures as they go and then export it straight away as an E57. Now, the best workflow you can do on it, instead of doing that, is do the TDX file and not refine project. I don't like to refine the project on these because it's putting a lot of the processing power on the tablet for the refinement, where really I want to use um, Trimble Realworks and let my um, high-spec computer do all the processing power. So I'll come up to here, Export Path Desktop, we can see how long in real time this takes to export and I can just go export project, TDX, finalize. And that's exported within a couple of seconds. You could see the difference if I was to refine it and export it as an E57, it would take much longer because it's using the processing power of the tablet. And then I've got different isometric views I can kind of scroll through and look at. So I can look at it which way I wanted to quite easily. Okay, and then I can go in here on my layers. So here I've got the pixel size. So it could be the pixel density is quite sparse. This was a little bit of a sparse scan because we've done it more as a, uh, just as a test out size. So I could maybe turn the uh, pixel density up or down as required just so it makes it a bit easier to see on the screen. So if I was to zoom in on, say, a bit over there, you're not going to be able to see much of that pixel density. But then if I was to turn it right up there, you can quite clearly see now we've got a really, really quite heavy pixel. Um, the actual size of the pixels themselves are changing in real time. So if I was to turn it down, and then I can invert the colours as well. So I can invert that and then some people prefer to have it on a white background depending on the outside whether it's sunny or not we can have it uh, white or black. We can put the grid reference on as well so we can have a look at the grid on the floor. Station colour we've already gone through we can have a look as well and check on the stations we can as well turn off the notes if if things are cluttering up the screen we are customizable on what we can see on the screen if the screen is becoming a little bit messy so i can turn off say i could put this back to black just because it's probably a little bit easy to see and then i can turn off my station so i'm literally now just looking at the point cloud but then i can turn back on my stations i can turn back on my station tabs and then I can turn off the grid because I don't want the grid. I just want to have a look at that. So one thing we can do is tap on here and we can have a look through all our, basically all our setups. So when I tap on this button here, it's going to give me a registered set. So at the moment, I've got everything in registered set one, which means it's registered my stations one and two as a registered set. I can see in there I've got scans, I've got all sorts of things in here. So I could go on view on that one and then have a look at the view, have a look at the map view on it, have a look at the register on it. So it's registered between one and two. I could break the line if needed to, or if I had a third station over here, which would have a better registration, I can do that. This is all live on here. So on here as well, 
we can add in station points and create new station points and we could even use a point for georeferencing if i was to example for example have a target somewhere on the screen a black and white checkered i could use it for georeferencing and create a point on there in here as well the other tools we've got we've got a measurement tool so i can go on a slope distance or horizontal distance and then have a look what the actual live distance is which is very handy when you're on site and you maybe do a scan and someone comes up to you and says, I really need to know the distance between X and Y. You can just simply tap on there, tap on there, and then get your distance of 2.035 and make sure and you can give them a live distance on site using the point cloud. Of course, we can zoom in on the point cloud and get quite an accurate uh, position on these. I've just done these a bit more of an example. If I'd done a georeference, I could do a single point and then get some uh, good coordinated values of it. So this is quite a handy one to look at the notifications, just simply because, say, if I was to come to, let's say, station two, it would say auto registered complete duration seven seconds error zero point six millimeters. So this is auto registering my station one to station well station two to station one and it's given me an error of 0 0.6 millimeters it's given me an overlap of nearly 80 percent which is way more than what you would need we aim for at least 30 i try and go more than 35 percent mark but as you can see there i'm nearly an 80 percent which will give us a hundred percent consistency and then it's given us the distance between stage setup one and setup two and you can see the um, errors in it as well. And that's quite a handy thing to look at as you're going doing your scans and making sure your scans are registering. But of course, if the scans do fail on any of these auto registering and we aren't able to access into it, we can throw that TDX file into Trimble RealWorks and then do a manual registration or auto register using planes. And that should then automatically get us to where we need to. If not, we can have the option of doing it manually. But as you can see, with this scan, there'd be absolutely no need whatsoever. They do have a limit box, which can be quite handy if there was a certain area of the scan, for example, you wanted to see. I maybe wanted to see maybe just the front of that scan. So you can see here, I'm just using two fingers to pull it across, two fingers to zoom in and out. And I'm just going to make, I can make my box smaller or bigger, depending on the scan. And then I can move it up and down as well. So it could be that maybe I just wanted to focus in on a very certain part of the scan, which we can do in here. And then I maybe want to just zoom in and just look at this section of scan that I've got in our reception and make sure it's all looking okay. In here, I'm just gonna put the pixel density up a little bit so I can see everything's coming very cleanly. Yeah, and I, and I know my uh, scan's okay. So that's the limit box feature in there as well. So on here, looking at the features inside of here, we have got one for the cloud. Now that is infilling the cloud. And then when I tap it, it's taken away some of the noise on the cloud. One thing that could be handy for you before you start any scan is check your scan parameters when you're connected to the scanner. And also, I like to just have a quick look in the settings and make sure these settings are as per I want them when you're connected to the scanner and just make sure all your settings are correct before you perform the scan. Make sure your parameters are correct as well. I can't think of anything else.